So I wanna start off this video by saying in May of 2019, I was hospitalized for one week due to my schizoaffective disorder and my intent and history of self-harm. I hope I never have to go back, but if I'm a danger to myself again, then I have no problem checking myself in once more. And of course, this channel being literally called Schizo Kitso, well, I have something called Schizoaffective Disorder. And just so you know, Schizoaffective Disorder is a term for people who experience symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, such as bipolar or major depression. For me, I am Schizoaffective Bipolar type which means that I have hallucinations and illusions, but also meet the criteria for bipolar one disorder. But just in case you are about to turn yourself into the slammer, I mean, check yourself into a psych ward, what are the things that you should bring that you might not think about? So here's my list and it is by no means like ending here, but this is what you should bring to a psych ward. So I'll dive right into it. You need your ID, you need your insurance card, you need a list of all your medications and all of your providers. That means doctors, therapists, everything. Neurologists, if you have one of those, just basically write down every doctor you have, all of your health information, because they're gonna need that in order to piece together just exactly what your situation is going in. What's interesting though, is that sometimes medications themselves aren't allowed to be brought in. And that sounds a little bit weird because if you're going to a psych ward, don't you need to have the medications that you take on a regular basis? So what happened to me was that I brought all my medications in a gallon plastic bag, cause that's how I've always done it and they took them as basically proof that I was taking those meds, but they refused to give me the pills in those bottles and instead gave me pills that they supplied. So still bring your meds, but don't expect to take those, expect to maybe take theirs. And again, it depends on where you go. It depends on the place. Um, it, it's different for everyone. But for me, I was, yes, I brought all of my meds with me, but I wasn't allowed to take a single pill in any of those bottles. I think I had a supplement that I was able to take, but that was really it. The next Next thing is that you want to bring a blanket. Blankets are so warm, they are so cozy, they sometimes feel like a hug. I mean, honestly, when I was there, I mean, I'm always cold. Like, that's just the thing for me is I'm just always cold. So I always have a blanket, I always have a cardigan. I love wearing sweaters and hoodies and stuff. So definitely bring a blanket if you tend to get cold very easily. It also can help keep you warm at night, that kind of thing. Just make sure it's not woven or knit because if you can possibly undo it and hang yourself, they will take it away from you. Shampoo and soap. Bring something that calms you, relaxes you, feels like home. Because you're gonna be in an unfamiliar place. It's gonna be very anxiety inducing and having something familiar with you, not only will you have like a blanket from home, but you'll also have the soap you use. And the thing is like when you're away from everybody for a week and you're just on your own, being clean really makes a difference because it's like, it's a sense of normalcy and there's nothing worse. We've all been on vacation where we forgot our shampoo and we had to use the hotel shampoo and it's always horrible. So like add that into a psych ward stay and just like, no, just, just bring your own shampoo. Just make sure it has no alcohol in it because they will take that from you and then make you use the crappy soap. The next thing is bring comfortable clothes, bring sweatpants, bring sweatshirts, make sure all the strings are removed, but bring things that are cozy. You're gonna be stuck there for a while, so you might as well be comfortable. And if you do bring things that do have strings in them, they might take it away from you and then make you wear a hospital gown. And no one wants to wear a hospital gown when everyone else is wearing normal clothes. Please, for the love of God, no matter how depressed and neglectful of your health you are, just bring a toothbrush and a toothpaste and please use them. I don't need your dragon breath breathing on me at 7 a.m. waiting in line for breakfast. Please, you don't want to do that to anybody. Brush your dang teeth, people. Next thing is something that absolutely saved me, and it's to bring a notebook. Note that this is a composition book. I got it from Walmart for like a dollar, but it's not a wire-bound notebook. If it's a wire-bound notebook, they won't let you bring it in because you can take the wire off and potentially kill yourself. This next thing will make you the absolute star of the unit, and it's playing cards. There's so many games you can play with playing cards. My favorite one to play while I was at the psych unit was uh, King's Corners. And I had this guy that I would play King's Corners with and he was pretty good at it and I was pretty good at it. And so we would play for like whenever we had free time and our units like were able to mingle with one another, like I would go over there and play King's Corners with him and we would just talk about life. So yeah, playing cards, bring them. <laughs> and notice they say B, look at that. They're B cards, so they're perfect for me. I can't believe I still have this too. Like this is actually the deck I used when I was in there. Wow. And if you don't like playing cards, other things like word searches and crosswords, those things work great too. Some people like Sudoku. 
And actually my roommate was a big fan of puzzles. She actually had her boyfriend bring her a 500 piece puzzle in the middle of the week. And man, we ate that up. That was so much fun. Like again, we were all kind of bored. So like anything to pass the time, but putting together a puzzle with people and talking about just mental health on very frank terms is actually a really interesting experience. And I did appreciate that. So yeah, puzzles, good stuff. And if you don't like puzzles, you don't like crosswords, you don't like playing cards, just bring a book. You will have time to read. Books are allowed. Bring two or three or four. There were a couple people on the unit that would be reading every spare time, every spare time, every second of spare time they got. I was on such a higher dose of Zyprexa that I couldn't focus on reading. My dad actually brought me a book uh, about playing card magic, but I couldn't get through it because I could hardly focus on the pages thanks to my medication. But anyway, books are great. You'll have time to read them. They're definitely a way to get out of the monotonous and anxiety inducing and just whatever your brain is doing to you, books in the psych ward are a good idea. This next one is something that it depends on where you go. So where I went, I wasn't allowed access to my cell phone, but I had access to a landline at certain specific times where I could use to, or I could use, where I could call people that I knew. But the thing is I was limited to the phone numbers I'd memorized in my head. And so what I would suggest to you is to bring a piece of paper with all the phone numbers of people you care about just in case you can't access your cell phone either. And you still can talk to the people in your support system, your family, your friends, etc. And the final thing is bring pictures. So I wasn't allowed to bring picture frames, but my dad brought me pictures of the things I loved and the things I cared about. So that um, this is like this, for example, this is a picture of my favorite stuffed animal. Her name is Madam B and she is turning 19 this year. Um, but he basically brought me photos. This is this is a, one of our Halloween trips, basically. I'm not gonna go through my family album, but photos are a way to feel less isolated. Basically, like I was given photos of, like I said, all the things I cared about, fun vacations I'd been on, events and whatnot. And so it kind of helped me remember that there was a life outside of the unit because while I was on the unit, like everything was about the unit. And so remembering that I did have fun in life, that I do have things I care about, that I do love stuff. It was kind of a nice, it was a nice thing. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If someone you know or yourself is headed to a psych ward, I really hope everything goes smoothly. There's no bumps. There's no horrible experiences and that everyone gets the help that they need. Psych wards can be very effective in helping people in a wide variety of situations. As many things that happened to me there that I didn't like, it still helped me in other ways that are really important. Will I go back to that hospital? Probably not, but I will not hesitate to check myself in if something else happens. But anyway, I'm gonna ramble forever if I don't go now. So love you all, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.